Hey, I'm Rob. Um, I'm here to show you how to uh, set up and calibrate a uh, Maslow sled. The uh, calibration process is the same, whether it's the Mega or the Do. We're going to be using uh, Makerverse. We kind of start from there. So the first thing we need is tape measure. We're going to take a couple measurements. You need two measurements right now. Okay, the first one is the distance between the motors. The other one you need is the workspace different distance, which is the distance between the top of your workspace board. And mine actually goes a little higher than it needs to, but I've got a line drawn across it. So the distance from the top of your workspace to the, the bottom of the motors or the, the center point of the motors. So you need that, that Y um, spacing. We take our tape measure and we measure from the I got 71 and a quarter. So. And then from the top down, it's looks like we're what is that? About an inch and seven eighths. From the top of the beam plus an inch and seven eighths. So I've got 18 and a half from the top of the beam, plus an inch and seven eighths. So inch seven eighths that puts me at 20 and three eighths. And then we'll take those numbers and we'll convert them to millimeters um, for the software. When we start up Makerverse. We go to the login screen and we log in. And you'll have to create your account and go through that. I'm not going to go through that right now. Um, and then when you first get to your system, you're going to choose your port, and mine is on ACM0. Uh, it's running on a Raspberry Pi, and so it doesn't have a COM number. And if you're running on Windows, you'll have a COM number. If you're on um, another platform, you may have some um, description of what the port actually is. Um, you're going to choose your baud rate. If it's a do, you choose 38.4. If it's a mega, you choose 57.6. If you have some variant and you change the firmware, you can pick whatever one you chose, but make sure that it matches the baud rate that's set in the firmware. If you have questions, go with 57.6 for the Mega or Classic, go with 38.4 for the Do. Okay. We do not enable flow control and you can or cannot, I mean, you, you choose if you want to connect automatically. I don't because I want to be able to um, catch it if it goes nuts. Okay. So then we connect. Okay. Now, if you have a Do, when you connect, you'll hear the hum and the hum means that you've got power to your motors and the thing is on. Now, the question I have is, did I connect the, um, the wires correctly to the, to the right port? I don't know yet. So I'm going to call this do calibrate. And I'm going to create a workspace for it. And when I create a workspace, the first thing, first thing it's going to say is nothing. OK? It says there's no serial connection. But when I connect, then it's going to tell me hey, you've not been calibrated yet. You need to calibrate your system. So look at your frame. How did you set up your chains? Typically, you can go over or sorry, under this bracket or over this bracket with your chain. Uh, this one goes under and then um, has a weight on it. So mine are off the bottom. The full length of the, um, of the beam is um, 1809. The sled weight, uh, oh, yeah, okay, 139 point, oh, this is 137. Point nine. Actually, 139.1 is the default. We'll go with that because that's the ring. We apply, and then it will make the changes in the console. You can see kind of in the background, and it'll say okay when it's done. So it does 80, it does 91, it does 40. You can see these numbers over here that it's, the calibration is changing for you so you don't have to do it manually. So this is pretty slick. Um, 
and then you have your stock width and your stock height mine is a four by four that's four feet by four feet for the height and the width so that's already in there you hit apply yours would be double that for the width usually for a four by eight then we go to the frame and the motor height 71.25 times 25.4 equals 18.0975. That's the width between the motors. And then the motor height is sorry, 20 and 3 eighths. So 3 divided by 8 plus 20 is 20.375 20 times 25.4. 517.52, so 517.52. We apply. Okay, then we go to our sled. We have a metal mass low. And we go to Z axis and we say, okay, we wanna move the Z axis up and down now. Right here where it says Z-axis resolution, this is what you're going to use if you have, uh, and yes, we want inverted. Um, if you have a standard motor with a standard gear set, you're going to use 918.75. If you have the 100 RPM motor with the 1 to 2 gear set like I do, you will use... Okay, and that humming is driving me crazy. I usually like to turn it off at this point, but you can't until you finish. Okay, so now we want to test it. We need to move up one. We'll try that. We'll try that. Okay. Okay, when it starts going crazy, press the reset key. So what happened? Um, I pressed move up and the other axis went nuts. So we don't have a home position right now. Now we know where the exact center is. We've measured the exact center. And take this and we're going to tell it to drive a little bit up and down. We're going to verify. So let's go in five millimeter increments and see if we tell Y to go up. But before we move or do anything, we simply reset the chains. Okay, so we're going to reset the chains. Then we're going to move up five millimeters. Okay, so it's moving up. What happens if we go right? Good. Okay, so we move up and right. So we we told it, so when you hit reset chain, it says, okay, I'm at the home, I'm at the dead center position. Well, we're not actually there yet. But in order to start doing that, you have to set it there first. So we want to lower the Z down a couple millimeters, but I don't think this is going to go very, go very well. Oh, it's going the wrong direction. So if Z is going backwards, you can set it with three equals four and that'll flip it the correct way. There you look at it. Oh, there we go. That looks right. Okay. That's in the dead center. Once that's in the dead center, we say, okay, we are going to reset our chains right there. Okay, and then it says, okay, I'm there. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our calibration process. Once you've done that, you are now set up and ready to calibrate. So you do this part first. Draw your, draw your plus in the middle, Drive your sled to the middle, get the Z axis set in the middle, 
X and Y set, you can verify that things move, but in order to start that, you had to do the reset chains first. You basically have to say, okay, you're somewhere. So with our change reset, we're gonna go to our calibration. So we're gonna click calibrate. So, but we've got off the bottom, our length, okay, we're set there, that's ready to go. Our stock width, we've done that. Our frame height and our motor width, we've done that. We have the metal sled, got that done. Our Z axis is moving backwards, so we need to switch that back and say no. Let's, so we step out of that and say, okay, my axis is moving backwards. Um, it's that number, go back to calibrate, move down. Okay, now it's going the correct direction. Once we believe that Z-axis is working, let's move it down. Go down. I'm just watching the shadow on the board. So when the shadow and the bit look like they touch, you're pretty close. Yeah. One or two more and we're there. Okay, if you get to a point where you try to move the Z axis and it won't go and it says I have a soft limit, alarm two soft limit, that means that the machine thinks it's it's at its limit and it can't go any further. Well, we're not even plunged into the, the material, which is why I don't like soft limits on this. But if you don't have soft limits on, you can drive your sled right off the side of your, your workspace. So that doesn't work either. So we have to turn off the soft limits or we have to simply reset the chains. So if we reset the chains, that says, okay, I'm in within the soft limits, it should be fine. Okay. Now, if we go, and the thing is, you can look at these settings. If you scroll down to the settings and say, okay, what's my Z-axis maximum travel? It's now 100. Um, and so all of these settings that we've made, oh, the X-axis maximum should be, because I set that as my X, Z travel. That looks good. That looks good. Minimum travel safe distance. Okay, now, if you don't like the humming noise while you sit here and you work, press sleep, and the humming stops. Okay, but if you want to move it, you got to reset it, and then it turns the motors back on. So we're going to go back into Calibrate. For all of your calibration, in order for it to work, it's important that the machine understands where the sled is. If the machine doesn't know where the sled is, then nothing's right. Because we have a two-motor setup on a on an XY, um, that transformation only works if you know the length of the chains for your triangle. If you don't, then it doesn't work. So knowing the chain length is critical. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So it says detach the sled, take one of the cotter pins and put it through the hole at the tip and then begin measuring chain. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We have these two connected together, and then it says, press begin measuring chains. So, so we click the button, align the cotter pin. Two chains to be exactly the same length. Simplest way to do this, use the y-axis controls to pull the chain taut. Use the x-axis control to ensure the cotter pin is exactly in the middle of the top beam. We need to measure the middle of the beam. Going to... Go ten millimeter swaths. I 
Let's go 100. Make it go a little faster. Huh. Oh, nice. It's at the soft limit, which means we cannot continue. So we need to turn off soft limits. So let's do that. Because soft limits are killing us right now. Settings. You scroll down on the settings. Soft limits enable right here. Change that to zero. Press the save button. Okay, it says it's ready to go. So then we can go back into calibrate and we go back to our chains. Okay, begin measuring chains. You have to click it twice for it to work, which seems kind of weird, but. Okay, so then we're gonna go up 100 millimeters, which is four inches. We're gonna have to move this around that. Okay, so see how it's, the cotter pin is, is suspended between them. You need to measure 36, or halfway for you would be 48, likely. That looks pretty close. Looks like we need to go, the X needs to go the X needs to go to the left by like one millimeter. So we'll switch this to one millimeter and go left. And that looks really good. That screws right in the middle. Now, normally I want those pulleys to be on that top screw, but because we're calibrating, you can see that. The end of those chains are hooked together with a little cotter pin. I took my um, my bike tool and I pushed out that last pin so it's open. And then when I cotter pin um, the chains together, they actually go on the next link. So maybe the next link should be what I connect. Hmm, I might be off by half an inch. I'm unsure. If we connect our sled to this point right here, this should be the center. But if we're if we're using our pins, these guys, and we're going around this link right here and this link right there, we probably should pin those two together to do this test. So I need to drop it down and reconnect it. So let's do that. Let's go down five. Give us some slack in a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Put that like that. Right on that screw, because that's in the middle, and then we just bring it up to what it's tight. So. Let's go up. Okay, so that's how I decided to do it. I'm hoping that that's correct. So I go up a few millimeters at a time. If we go too tight, it'll pop that cotter pin off. So if we zoom out a little, there's a little bit of sag on either side of these. And so I want I want it to be tight, but I don't want to pull it off. So I'm going to go up one more. That's probably going to do it. And they look 
they look centered to me because that screw's right in the middle. So actually, I would advocate putting a screw dead center, just up. Now, these are not, actually it should pull tight like about right here. So we probably, if it, lean, if it lays on the screw, but it's not quite tight enough. So we need to go just a little bit more. screw up right at the very top to hook that on. And that's tight now. So as it pulls, it'll pull it apart like that, but you want to be able to... Okay, is that in the middle? The question is, is that centered? I'm going to say yes, it's plus or minus a millimeter, and for some of you that may not be acceptable, but for me it's just fine. The chains are in. So then we hit next. Let's slack the chains. Let the Y axis control move the cotter pin down so you have enough slack to attach the sled, but do not attach it yet. The cotter pin should remain in the exact center of the workspace. If it does not, they're not identical or your frame's not level. We have a mark in the spoil bar already in the middle. So let's go down 100. back up here. It's a happy accident right there. Move the chain down like that. And it should just drive right down the center line. We drive it down. 100. Good to me. Let's see if we go 500, that should do it. Okay, it's almost exact center. It's about an inch high from exact center. We could actually make it the exact center, but if we do that, then the sled's gonna hang down low because because of the ring, the sled, the, the chains only need to go. Go to the next step. The next step says attach the sled. Make sure both sprockets have a gear tooth pointing exactly upwards. Okay. So. This guy, and we'll hook him on the waste board somewhere. We'll take this guy because he has a pin already. Alright. So then we attach the sled. Attach the sled by bringing the sled up. Holding on the waste board, I usually just lean on the waste board to put it on. Okay, and then we slide the chain through the little hole on the ring. And we put the cotter pin not on the first link with the open hole, but the one, the, the second link. So both, you want to sew the cotter pin, both of the ends of the cotter pin go through chain links. So that's how you know you got the right pin. And this, these metal cotter pins are a little stiffer than the maker made ones, so they're a little harder to get on. But if you use a pair of pliers, it makes it easier. Just push it on. Chain. So. 
So once you have the cutter pin securely in place, mount the rollers on the ring. Make sure there are no obstacles in the way. So we have the chains on. The sled is a little low, like about a foot low. So when you extend your chains, extend them so they're, I don't know, six inches above the centerpiece. Let's go up. Once you get it here, the thing's centered, you then mark your chains. So and that says, okay, we're done. Next, measure actual location. Measure the distance from the top of the stock to the edge of the sled. 17 and 5 eighths. So, 5 divided by 8 plus 17 times 25.4 equals 447.675. Okay, and every time it does that, it moves just a little bit. That concerns me. Okay. Oh, I told it to move to center and it moved to center. Okay, so now we got to do uh, the Z axis. That says it's two millimeters below where I want to be, but that's okay. We're going to go up. Okay, good. Half a millimeter above, so we'll go down a half. Okay, our Y offset is two millimeters. Okay. Move the distance from the top of the tip of the end mill to the center mark you made. Okay. So we're going to measure. Put in minus four because it's four millimeters low. Well, let's finish and apply results. And from here, then you can do your edge calibration where you drive it over and you measure how far to the edges. I like to do the uh, precision calibration. Let's do a target distance of uh, 50.8. So it's two inches in. Just, that way we know we're not going to hit any of the screws in the corners. Cut. So as we go, we enter these numbers in. calibration sometimes the sled gets stuck if it's off the corner so um, I would almost say you need to go in instead of 50 go in like a hundred so that your calibration points are closer to here that way your sled doesn't fall off the edge and break your bit um, I have hit a screw in the corner before so you want to stay away from that
So once we do that, we press the calibration button. It runs through the math. Well, that's 65, so 64. 64. 